a house passed down through the generations is a privilege, but if that house is built of timber and the timber has spent decades getting wet, then there could be a very tough price to pay. When rot and insect infestation takes hold and the wood turns to powder, it's not long before the house could come tumbling down. Tonight, she wants an idyllic family life in the country. Nobody wants to feel that they're not safe in their own home. He's scared repairing their ancient house could cost more than they can afford. My biggest worry is if it's financially beyond repair for us to do. But after four generations in the same family, this inherited farmhouse could be on its last legs. Well, unless you do something to it, it's not going to make it through to the next generation, this house. I'm gutted. You know, I really am. This is the ultimate example of an old house that's been left to rack and ruin. Just on the outskirts of Chelmsford live livestock farmer Andy Green and his wife Andrea, who have been together for three years and have five children between them. Is that me? Is that me? Yes. Surrounded by 300 acres of Essex farmland, they live in this timber-framed house. The smaller section of the house dates back 700 years, and the larger addition is thought to be 400 years old. At different times, the sides have been covered in dark wood cladding and the front with a pink render. It's been in Andy's family for over a century and four generations. It's always, you know, one day, son, this is, this is going to be yours, and it is mine, and I'm looking forward to the day when I can give it to, to one of ours. For Townie Andrea, moving to the country and living in an old farmhouse was a romantic dream. I grew up in a new house. Um, when I left there, I moved into a new house, and they can often be quite soulless with no character. So living in a house like ours is really exciting because there's so much history there. The views here are lovely, and we've got the birds in the garden, and it's idyllic. But over the last few years, Andy and Andrea have been waking up to some pretty major problems with owning an old timber-framed house. The old roof is well past its prime, and when the rain chucks it down outside, it also pours inside. In years gone by, if I was lying in bed listening to the rain, I would have really enjoyed it. It's quite nice to drift off to sleep. You don't sleep here. You just worry about how much of it's going to come through the ceiling. For years, water has been making its way into the cracks in the render and through the roof and down to structural beams which are decaying alarmingly. Andy and Andrea worry about the safety of their family home. The kids are running around in the living room where you know, you know the beams aren't very good in the cellar and you hear a bit of a crash in a bank. You just worry if, uh, if they're going to come through the, through a floor. It's not just rainwater causing problems. Leaking plumbing is also rotting the upstairs floors. The shower leaks significantly, and I do wonder sometimes whether or not I will just go straight through the floor. The perilous state of this house is also a threat to the family's health. Cracking render and holes in the roof and windows means there's little to keep the elements out. The children this house should be sheltering are exposed to icy cold drafts. We deal with it by putting electric blankets on their beds, but really we need to give them a home where they can be warm and not be reaching for coats when they get out of bed in the morning. The house is rotting away all around them and Andy's inherited an emotional burden. Because it's been my family home for so long, there's, there's a, an unspoken pressure. I'd love to put the house to its former glory, if, if not actually better than. It's frankly not surprising that after so many years of neglect, this old house is at breaking point. I just hope there's still time to save it. So, presumably, if it's been in your family for that long, you have never had a survey done on it? No, we haven't. What would your worst fear be? that we can't save it. Hopefully that's not going to be the case. 
But when you look at the state of the timbers in the cellar that are meant to support the weight of the whole house, it's not surprising this family are scared the diagnosis might be terminal. This is so decayed, at some point, this whole beam will snap. <laughs> in terms of the structure, they're a major part of why the house is staying up and there isn't much left of them, which means it's air holding the building up, which is not so good. We had worried about the floor falling through. We do say to the children, don't jump around in the lounge. Gosh. Above here, yeah. It definitely needs to be dealt with, and it needs to be dealt with yesterday. Timber-framed houses in England date back as early as 1200 AD. Oak posts were sunk into the ground as vertical supports for the structure. Branches from young trees were then placed at the top to give a thatched roof. Posts in the ground would rot, so timber houses like Andy and Andrea's were built on brick plinths to protect the structural wood from moisture in the ground. A base of strong horizontal beams called sole plates rests on top of this plinth, creating the main supporting base for the house. Vertical posts are then secured to the sole plates, providing the remaining structure. Most modern timber houses are constructed on a plinth such as this. 25% of new builds in the UK are made of timber and take about three months to construct. Timber-framed houses will stand for many, many years as long as all structural beams are protected from water causing rot and insect infestation. This has not happened in Andy and Andrea's house. Upstairs, rain leaking through the roof has soaked the plaster, causing it to fall off the ceiling, exposing saturated structural timbers. Crikey, that looks really bad. How long has this been getting worse for? I, it first happened about four years ago. Then it rained and really rained, and it all just came flooding through. I'm going to have to be really honest. This is a major timber that's holding up your roof mm. and it's clearly been leaking for a very long time do you think you've kind of slightly put blinkers on as to how bad this is because you just can't quite face up to absolutely we do wear blinkers yeah, all the time. yeah it's not slightly it's we've got blinkers on <laughs> yeah I can't quite decide whether I think you're really brave or really mad <laughs> It's not just rainwater attacking the timbers. Andy and Andrea made an attempt at home improvements by adding a new shower four years ago. But even though they know it leaks, causing the wooden joists holding it up to rot, crazily, they've kept on using it. When we have a shower, you can see the water downstairs. What, coming straight through? Yes. Yeah. OK, you turn the shower on. Show me where okay. it is. OK. This is where it leaks. Okay. Yeah. It kind of runs down. Oh, the blimey. There, yeah. Have you never thought about looking at why it leaks? No. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> OK, turn it off now. The problem with it is it's rotting all the timbers, because, to be honest, you're on borrowed time. Do you ever think you might, it might just rot straight through? Yeah, I do, regularly. Every right. time I use it, <laughs> you actually. Think, am I going to end up downstairs? Yeah. Mm. The blinkers are certainly on. Leaking plumbing should never be ignored. To fix the internal rotting timbers is going to be expensive, and outside there are yet more pricey problems. The house is covered with a wood cladding and a render, which were intended to protect the timbers beneath from the elements. But the render is cracked and the rainwater has been getting in. This render is really damaging the front of the building. It doesn't move and flex in the way it needs to, hence the cracking that you can see. Because it's not doing the job it needs to do, I suspect you've got decay in a lot of the timbers within the wall, which is why this, there'll be a timber that goes right across here. Now, it's clearly rotten at this end, yeah. but I suspect it's rotten halfway, where you can see the render caving in. What's worrying me is this you can see is bad and you can see this has got to be sorted out, but it's how far up this rock goes and if it's the stud work in, in the walls in here. That's the bit that's worrying me. That's rebuilding the house if, if these walls have had it. I think the house has got to a point where you are going to have to spend some significant money securing the building staying up. 
Mm, sure. So this is not cosmetic work mm. that needs to be done. Andy and Andrea's timber house has a terrible list of troubles. A leaking roof, crumbling floors, cracks everywhere, and failing structural timbers. These are all major problems and they need serious money to fix them. How much money have you got? We, about 60. 60? I mean, really, honestly, 60 isn't going to touch the sides with this house. I suppose this is our worst fear come true, and, uh, uh, and it is as bad as we thought it might be. Worst case scenario. It's scary. Would you want to pass this house down to the next generation again? That's what I would... I'd love to be able to, to give it to, to one of our children. Well, unless you do something to it, it's not going to make it through to the next generation, this house. I'm gutted. You know, I really am. I can see why saving this building is so important to Andrea, and especially Andy, but in this case, I'm genuinely worried it might be too late. The dream of marrying into an idyllic country lifestyle has turned into a nightmare for Andrea. I am really fed up with the house now. All of the problems with this house that have been accumulating over so many decades has been landed on us. To help them decide what to do, in come the specialists to give this house the first survey of its centuries-old life. What this absolutely confirms is that there isn't enough strength in the timber to hold the house up. That's right. And the pressures pile up. It just feels like it's going to be a never-ending money pit at the moment. This timber-framed farmhouse dating back to the 14th century is home to Andy and Andrea Green and their five children. With the house on the brink of disaster, today it's time to take a serious look at the leaking roof, the rotten cellar beams holding the house up, the blown and cracked render and the rotten floors. This house has been in Andy's family for 100 years, and so he's obviously very emotionally attached to it. But it has had years and years of neglect. The question is, has it now gone too far to bring it back from the brink? As this house has been passed down through the generations, it's never had a survey, and today it's really getting one. Specialists forensically examine the damage and cost up the repairs. For Andy, this is more than a house. It's four generations of family history, and there's a lot riding on what we might unearth. My biggest worry is not the fact that it's beyond repair, because I think anything can be repaired if you're prepared to throw enough money at it. It's if it's financially beyond repair for us to do. Before we can find out the costs, we need to get to the root of the problems. Structural engineer Simon Pitchers has been surveying all sorts of houses for over 20 years. He knows that in this property he could unearth a lot more serious damage than meets the eye. The problem with timber frame is, as soon as you start exposing it, you don't know what you're going to find. It can be enormously expensive to sort out. And there's just a bit of evidence around the outside that suggests there are problems. On the outside of the house, the render is cracked and blown. Timber specialist Steve Hodgson takes a closer look to discover if rot has spread to the structural beams beneath the render. You get your nose in there, you can see there's an awful lot of decay to that sole plate, but it's basically taken away um, all the integrity of that timber. This is just one sample area, but this could apply virtually anywhere on the whole building. Any water that gets in behind the render has nowhere to go apart from into the wood. And wet wood results in decay. Yeah. Wet rot in a timber-framed house can be catastrophic and it causes damage to thousands of homes in the UK every year. 
Wet rot is easy to distinguish. Your timbers will become spongy and the lack of support could cause walls to bow. The wood will crumble in later stages of decay. Preservative paints can prolong the life of wood exposed to moisture. Damaged sections should be cut out and replaced, but prevention is better than cure. So keep water out of your home and regularly check for leaks. If you fear wet rot has damaged structural timbers, seek expert advice. Back in Andy and Andrea's home, I'm afraid I'm the bearer of bad news. Steve's had a look at the timbers that mm -hmm. he can find, and they're so rotten that there's not a lot holding the house up. Um, all of the timber across the bottom here is totally decayed. The corner posts have totally decayed. It's just turned into powder in a lot of places. You can tell from the bulging that timber isn't well, but the idea of it being powder is um, scary. Mm, yeah. The right thing to do now would be to take all of this sand and cement render off and have a good, thorough look at the remainder of the timbers, because mm. if they're all as bad, well, you've got some big problems on your hands. I guess it'll, you know, it's what it's all going to cost to replace it. The one that we know needs replacing, which is along the bottom here and the corner posts, the bottom section of the corner post, you're probably talking about £10,000. OK. Yeah. I mean, it's a big old lump of wood. All of the render and cladding on all four walls has to come off, so Andy and Andrea can find out how many more rotten timbers are lurking beneath. While the house has taken back to its bare structure, it's time for Andy and Andrea to insulate, as without insulation, the house is frankly uninhabitable. At the moment, heating this house is a little bit like heating a garden shed, because it's all just seeping out of the sides. I think that you'd be mad not to insulate it, because, well, it's costing a fortune apart mm. from anything else. It's a tough reality check. Insulating will be a lot of money, but these days it's an essential spend. That's hammered home when I talk to Andrea's children, George, five, and Manel, 11. They are currently sharing bedrooms which let in icy cold drafts. Do you mind being in the cold? Well, you get used to it. If you could do it right now, how would you, what would you change about the house? I think the top two rooms should be bedrooms, so us kids would be able to have each of our own room. And um, I'd like to change the roof because it's got a giant hole in the top. That's not okay. ideal, is it? No. Investigations have already unearthed a terrible lack of insulation and rotting timbers. Now we need to look at the roof. It's been failing to keep the rain out for years. Roofer Richard Jordan goes up and gets a better look. You can see here that the lead isn't lapped right on the step. Um, there's debris in there, there's a plank, there's a tin. Basically, it just can't get away quick enough. And you've got to have a good top hat. You know, you've got to have a good roof on it. With no hat to speak of, water has been allowed to penetrate this property for years and attack those all-important structural timbers inside. Crikey, that's really rotten, that timber. Very. You can see the bottoms of the rafters that should be sat on top of this beam are now floating in the air. And that's because not only the beam's rotten, but the ends of all those rafters have rotted off as well. There's more. That damp timber is the perfect home for visitors that strike terror in the heart of people with wood houses. Death Watch people. Death Watch beetle are the most harmful wood-boring beetles to have in your home. They start their lives as grubs, eating their way through decaying wood for 10 to 12 years before emerging as adults. Death Watch beetle love wet, rotting timber, so make sure your house is watertight and dry. Is it live, though, the Death Watch beetle? Yes, it is. Um, and, and you can prove that by that. Oh, my God, look. There you go. That's a very small, juvenile Death Watch beetle grub. And if we can find the grubs living in the wood, then we know for certain that the infestation is alive. This infestation will need to be treated, but there's no point while the roof is leaking. Their £60,000 budget is rapidly depleting, and now they urgently need to replace the roof. You have a long, long, long valley 
water has been pouring through it and there's a piece of wood that sits underneath it, this is all that's left of the end of it. The rest of it has completely rotted away. Um, it's kind of a scary thought to see uh, that there's not a lot of rotten timber holding the roof up, really. We've also found um, Death Watch Beetle, which throughout the house, here's some of your Death Watch Beetles. There's a very strong likelihood that the roof will collapse completely in the very near future with the amount that's now holding it up. You have to replace the roof. Dare I ask the question of how much that's all going to cost? I reckon you'll be talking about £25,000 for this. Is that <laughs> better or worse than you expected? Worse. Oh. Sadly, the news for Andy and Andrea could be about to get even worse. We're taking a closer look at those big beams in the cellar that support the weight of the whole house. Robert de Morse is analysing the wood with a specialist instrument to detect decay. Straight away, you can see there, we've gone into some reasonably good timber. It's not brilliant, but it's good enough up to there. But then we've started getting into some quite serious decay. OK, what this absolutely confirms is that there isn't enough strength in the timber to hold the house up in the long term. That's right. The main beam down there has been so badly decayed that you need to shore it up without just propping it up, but actually reinforcing uh, lots of the timbers that are down there that are about to fail. And to do that, I mean, you're talking about a few thousand pounds. That's the best price we've had. Yeah. A few thousand, it is, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're thinking that's cheap, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Cheap as chips. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, what about the shower? It's been leaking for the last four years, soaking the joists below. Timber specialist Steve Hodgson takes a look and confirms the rot. The timbers, where they all meet in the corner, have all rotted away. There's only a very small part of one particular floor joist that's left that's holding the floor where it is. It all looks very dicey. Be careful never to ignore a leak. Four years of constant dripping has caused costly damage that now needs urgent attention. You're going to be looking at £5,000. Another five grand? Yeah. I don't know what to say. It's a lot to take in for Andy and Andrea. The dream of making their house a warm and practical family home comes with a big and scary price tag. Around £25,000 for a new roof. Up to £25,000 to repair, insulate and reclad the exterior walls. £10,000 for rotten timbers they already know about. And up to £30,000 more to replace the other decayed wood in the house. A further £5,000 on damp and another five to treat the Death Watch beetle. That all comes to £100,000. It's a lot of money on repairs. This house is being eaten from around you, the floor's collapsing, the walls are being eaten away and eroded by, by rot, and the roof's collapsing. I think you're going to not see much change from 100,000. We wanted a house that didn't leak, and we wanted to give the children two extra bedrooms so we didn't have anyone sharing. If you don't spend the money now, it'll only get more expensive. It'll be 120 grand, 130 grand, 140 grand, rather than just 100. I just haven't got 100 grand. Have we? It just makes me feel sick, really, to think about it. It just feels like it's going to be a never-ending money pit at the moment. Coming up. Don't take off anymore. Yeah. Right, OK. You are weakening the structure. Nobody wants to feel that they're not safe in their own home for any reason. Andy and Andrea's ancient timber-framed farmhouse has been diagnosed with a failing roof, chronic rot, death watch beetle and a leaking shower. They've decided to swallow the pill and repair their house. It could cost up to £100,000, but they only have a budget of 60. But they're committed to returning this house that has been in the family for over a century to health and want to make it a safe and secure home. Mm -hmm.
but it's spring. And while it's the perfect time for property repair work, livestock farmer Andy has a lot of other things on his plate. To start a project like this now, this time of year, for me, is the worst. It's crazy. We've got 250 lambs due to be born imminently. Working 18, 20 hours a day, catching sleep when I can. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty hard at the moment. Andy starts working long days on the farm. And then in the evenings, it's off with the farming boots and on with finding ways to keep the costs down on the build, which means doing as much of the work as they can themselves. That doesn't have to be done. It doesn't have to be done. I guess we could the render and the cladding. We can definitely do that. That's do that. got to save a fair bit. I don't know when we're going to find the time to do it. But we will have to. In the heart of the busy lambing season, Andy and Andrea tackle their first job. Uncovering which timbers are rotten and in need of repair by hacking the concrete render off the walls of their house. It's, so sharp, isn't it? it's not long before their worst fears are realised. They discover timbers that are so badly rotten, they've turned to powder. Well, Sarah said it was, didn't she? She said it was like powder in there, and I didn't believe her. Mm. I think we should have done. Yeah. This is more serious than they think. When their building surveyor, Richard Edwards, arrives on the scene, he swiftly stops them in their tracks. Don't take off anymore. Right, OK. You are weakening the structure. With the timbers so rotten, the fear is that the render is now the only thing that's actually holding the house together. By taking that away, you're left with studs that are deteriorated badly, and yeah. looking at that one in particular, that one's honeycomb, isn't it's it? death watch beetle holding hands that are holding it together. A more careful and costly approach to removing the render is needed, so they stop working on the outside. Andy and Andrea turn their attention to fixing their dangerously decayed cellar beams. So it's off to their local building merchants for supplies. Like for like, hardwood timber replacements are simply beyond their budget. But modern alternatives of reinforced steel joists don't have the look they want. I suppose it's this or wood. We could paint them, but it would be such a shame to replace the, the timbers we have with something that looks like this. It's not looking very pretty. No. Andy and Andrea don't want steel beams in their centuries old farmhouse, but they simply can't afford like for like timber replacements. Andy is busy working on the farm, so I'm showing Andrea what their timbers should be doing, why they're no longer up to the job, and a cunning and cost-effective solution. I brought you here today to show you the, the difference between a solid timber and one that's had serious decay, because the timbers that you have not only are carrying the weight of you all walking around, but they're also carrying a massive amount of the weight of the house above. So, if they fail, that's a very, very, very big problem. First up, we test out just how much weight a solid piece of timber can take. OK, let's start it. So that's two tonnes, which would be roughly the weight of people walking around on top of it. See it bowing a bit. When it gets to ten tonnes, that would be the equivalent weight of a single, single right. decker bus. You can hear it cracking. We're at 16 tonnes. 23.3. I mean, it's incredible how much it can take. 24 tonnes. I wasn't expecting that. I have to say, I wasn't expecting it to be so loud. <laughs> Now it's time to compare a timber that's been weakened to represent the decayed beams in the farmhouse. So, let's take it away. This is only at one tonne and it's already showing signs of weakness. This is not looking good. So this is 1.4 tonnes. The timber's cracking and we're at two tonnes. It's not very good, is it? No. The strong solid timber that doesn't have any beetle and any wet rot can carry 12 times the load that this decayed timber can. 
I'm surprised that it's so much weaker than the other one. We all use that room, it gets a lot of traffic and it's terrifying to think that if we hadn't realised, we could have been quite seriously injured. Andy and Andrea want to keep the character of their ancient building. So next is a solution that will let them keep the original timbers by strengthening them and avoid bringing in modern metal beams. Now this method is called rod and resin. So you channel out a hole, you put a reinforcing rod in, or several, depending on what the structural engineer recommends, and then you fill the gap with the resin, let it go hard, and you've got it solid as a rock again. And how much does that cost? The product itself is about £600, as opposed to a steel, which would be about, to put it in and fit it would be probably about £3,000. To get somebody else to put this product in and to do it for you would be probably about £1,800. So it's a significant saving, but you can do it yourself. And most importantly, it doesn't cause massive disruption. I mean, it's cheaper and it means we can retain the original features. So it's good. Some good news at last. And back on the site, work is well underway. Andy is taking time out from the farm to help rip out their water-damaged bathroom floor. Once the floor is out, the structural timbers are propped up. New joists are laid and the shower tray is put in. Work on the house may be underway, but it's a huge job, and Andrea is worried about keeping to any sort of budget. We've got 60 thousand and it's crucial that we keep the budget under control to ensure we can afford the work that gets done. Today we're going to put that rod and resin method into action and fix their decaying beams. How do you feel about this as a solution? As long as it's going to be strong enough, it would be it's nice to, to keep what we what we've got. It's a feature, isn't it? First of all, we use plywood to box in the beam from below. This is called a shutter box. All gaps are filled to stop the resin leaking out. Once this is finished, we move upstairs to do the rest from above. Right. We cut out a section from the middle of the beam for the rod to sit in. Yes, it's full of holes, isn't it? You can see where they've been all through here. Then we slot the rod into the channel in the beam and mix the resin to be poured onto it. So we're mixing a hardener with the resin, and then we stir that together, and then we add cement, which is a filler which packs it out. Mm. Lovely. OK, so if you pour that into the hole... ..this will take 24 hours to completely set, and then you'll have a beam that is as strong as it was the day that it was put in. They saved money fixing the cellar beams themselves, but the roof's in such a bad state, they need to get the professionals in to repair it. The workmen start by stripping off the tiles and rolling back the lead gully. This area where we're standing now is where the water was getting in. It's very bad. It's, it's, it's totally washed away. All Andy and Andrea can do is move out for their own safety. The problem we have with the valley has been the first time that I have genuinely felt fearful being inside the house and also wanted to make sure that all the children weren't here to ensure their safety. Nobody wants to feel that they're not safe in their own home for any reason. The whole roof is stripped back to its bare rafters. This lets us see the full extent of the timber damage. This means massive disruption for the family. For the foreseeable future, they'll be living in their mobile home next to their house. Life in the caravan is hot during the day, mm. cold at night and squashed, but it just allows us to push on with the house. Looking forward to getting back in the house. And we will appreciate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Whilst everyone is out of the house, the Death Watch beetle attack is treated after years of rampant infestation. Another massive job is replacing all the rotting timbers throughout the house, starting with the roof. It also requires new felt and lead flashing before tiles are placed back on top. After the roof, they tackle the decaying walls. The render at the front of the house has cracked and bulged due to the water seeping in. Andy and Andrea's worst fear is that the whole beam will need replacing, which could cost a whopping £10,000. But there's some good news. Once you move slightly away from the rot, it becomes very solid and quite supportive. The small rotten section of timber is cut out, removed and replaced. But they decide not to use solid oak like the rest of the house, but instead much cheaper softwood, costing just a few hundred pounds. Instead of having to replace the whole thing, it's just a small section of it. Uh, it's it saved us an absolute fortune. Once the fabric of the house has been made secure, the entire inside needs to be refurbished. It's four and a half months since work began and Andrea is finally able to think about the decorative look of their home. It's really nice to be able to do something as simple as painting. The issues we had with the house were so colossal that finishing touches were were far from our minds. It will be the, the home we've always dreamed of having together, I think. Coming up, a final visit to Andy and Andrea's home. Hi, hello, how are you? <laughs> to see if they've managed to create the safe family sanctuary they've always dreamed of. I saw Andy and Andrea's timber-framed house. It had suffered so badly from water damage, I was amazed it was still standing. I've come back five months later to see if they've managed to turn it into the family house that they both so desperately wanted. When I first came here, the roof was full of holes with water pouring through, and the whole wooden frame of this house was riddled with rot and eaten away by Death Watch beetles. Now they have made the structure safe, put a stop to all the leaks, repaired the damage and redecorated. Hi, hello, how are you? Yeah, good. This was pouring water in when I first arrived. It was literally soaking down through this hallway. Yeah. yeah. It's lovely. It is. It's a lot different, isn't it? Yeah, and it feels dry. Did you ever think you'd get it this dry and warm? We had a mountain to climb, and it was hard to imagine ever getting to the point where we were winning. It, it felt like a, an insurmountable problem. But you got there. We did, and we have. Fantastic. And is the rest of it good? Yeah, do you want to come and have a look? Yeah. Upstairs, the walls and ceilings were in danger of collapsing. <laughs> Now they've stopped the rot and got rid of the woodworm, and you can admire rather than fear the timbers. Well, that's where that big hole was. Crikey, that looks so much better. You have to have an umbrella now to get up the stairs. <laughs> the bathroom was cracking up and the shower was leaking through to downstairs. So they've ripped it out, replumbed, and put in a brand new suite that won't fall through the floor. It's a fantastic wet room now. Isn't that brilliant? Is this how you pictured the bathroom? Have you had a vision for this or was it just make do? I think this is nicer than either of us thought it, it yeah. would be, isn't it? Really, it, ple it, really pleased how it's come It's out. slightly bigger because the walls are, mm. are further back, aren't they? It's been beautifully tiled, which really helps. Not only is everything flat and flush, but also the way the grout lines have been lined up all makes sense. There's a logical mm. form to it and they're all consistent and it's, it's been really nicely tiled. It makes a big difference looking this good. The upstairs of the house was totally unusable due to an old and very leaky roof. 
They've now completely replaced it and reclaimed the attic space for two new, cosy and warm bedrooms for the children. This is so brilliant, having this all finished. Great. It's completely dry, mm. the house, and that is the biggest difference, isn't it? Because yep. with a sand roof and sand windows and insulated walls, now you can go forward inside, because there was no point in going forward. No. So you, exactly. the only point before was to let it fall down. Are you pleased with how these attic rooms have turned out? It gives us more space for the children and that was the thing that we really, really needed to have. Yeah. How have you found being pretty responsible for the build? It, I mean, that is stressful and it's a big responsibility, but it had to be done. Um, I, but we're both exhausted. Yeah. We've got a few things that we need to, to do before we can completely relax. Mm. But I think it's safe to say phase one is nearly complete. My kids would absolutely love this. and. I'm hoping they're not going to see that bed, because they'll be very cross and jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Andy and Andrea have done an enormous amount of work restoring this house to its former glory. But they still have got to finish off the outside with a final layer, though all the rotten timbers have already been replaced with new ones. Because that was completely and totally gone, that piece of wood there, wasn't it? Yeah, when we, when we stripped it back, you could see that it was only just this section that needed replacing. So we didn't have to, as we feared, had to go right the way across the whole front of the building. I have to comment on the fact that you've used softwood instead of hardwood. If we let it get wet, which we're not going to, because it's all, obviously all got to get rendered yet, applied and rendered yet, um, yes, it would have a shorter lifespan. But the cost of putting the hardwood back in there was just ridiculous. And the main problem with your house has always been the fact that you've got so much timber decay in a timber-framed house. How does it feel now to know that it's, it's solid and firm and holding the roof up? With the repairs that we've done in there, it's better than it was when it was new. It feels like it's coming alive again. In a way, it's back from the brink of death, from Death Watch Beetle. Yeah, it, it feels like a, like a home now, not just a house. Andy and Andrea are certainly creating a home to be proud of. Downstairs, the ceilings had suffered years of water damage. But now they're fixed. And they've been able to put in the kitchen Andrea had always dreamed of. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Great. How long have you been frustrated by this kitchen? since I moved in, really. And it's just my dream kitchen. I adore it. Oh, do you? Yes. Obviously, being a working farm and this being the farmhouse, the kitchen is always the heart of the home, but this is much more so yeah. than many houses. Mm. So, you presumably, this is where it all happens in this room. Yeah. It feels to me as though for years and years there's been a bit of a cobble together with this house, just mm. trying yeah. to get away with as little as you could possibly get away with and actually doing a bit less than you could have got away with. There's an element of manana about all the work that's been happening here. Yeah, it has been, been patched up and, and at times bodged up, to be fair. But there's always uh, something else to, to spend the money on, on the farm. Now, you, you only had £60,000 mm -hmm. at the beginning of this to spend. You've made fantastic inroads, but it's not quite finished, is it? No, we've we've sort of run out of money, of funds, really, to, to, to go much further. Um, so once we've had harvest and got the harvest in, we'll be able to hopefully crack on and, do, and finish it off. So if it's a good harvest, does that mean that the house will be completely finished? And if it's a bad harvest, it'll stay like this for a bit longer? Um, yeah, pretty much. You've now got a safe, dry, warm, secure house that you can leave to future generations. And I think on your watch with this house in your family, that's a good thing to have done. Mm. It must make you feel good, doesn't it? Yeah, it gives you that warm feeling, doesn't it? Mm. The children were living in a caravan whilst the building work was taking place. At last, they get to see their new bedrooms. 
Just what I wanted. How's that? Oh, Mummy, thank you. Look at this, George. <laughs> Andy and Andrea not only inherited a house, but a whole host of problems which had been left so long they'd got really big. They're now on the home straight though, and very soon we'll have a safe and secure legacy to leave to the future generations.